Hello! What's new in Angular 1.3? In this screencast we're going to take a look at the first of a number of different features that Angular 1.3 introduces. In this screencast the focus is on ng model options. ng model options allows us to control how ng model updates are done. We start by setting up a simple Angular application using the Angular C template we install via Bower, and we'll also use NPM. Once you've done that, we explore the sources that we have got from the Angular Seed repository. We can see, for example, that there is a well-structured project here. We can see the Bower libraries, we can see the NPM libraries, we can look at the Bower JSON file and see that what is viewed in the logical view matches what is registered in the Bower.json file. And similarly, when we look in the package.json file, we can see the npm libraries that are shown in the np libraries node. Look in the Selenium tests node, and you see the Selenium tests. And after collapsing everything, let's take a look at just those parts that are the parts where we will do our work. So this is the actual application logic from the Angular Seed template. We're going to run this into the internal browser. This is a JavaFX web view. And in there we can see our view one and our view two that come from our application code. We can connect that web view with NetBeans itself. And so we can find out very easily where items that we see in the browser are defined in the code. We can delete and immediately we can see that the view is updated. Let's go into the view, view one, so one of the two partials, and this is where we will do our coding. We will add an input field, and here is where we're going to use, first of all, ng model. We set our model to name. We add some display text in front of it. Below that we add an expression which is our name. So now we have binding between the label that you see here and the input field. We enter a name and we can immediately see that reflected. By default the view is updated immediately which means Every time the input element fires an input event, Angular's digest loop is executed until the model stabilizes. And that's nice because we don't have to set up any event listeners and the DOM is updated automatically to reflect model values in the view. Angular takes care of this. However, that also means that because the digest happens to be triggered on every single keystroke, Angular has to process all the registered watchers on the scope whenever you type something into the input element. ng model options comes with a couple of options to control how ng model updates are done. For example, with update on and blur, we tell Angular that instead of updating the model immediately after each keystroke, it should only update when the input fires an on blur event. And similarly, with the debounce, we can specify a timer that is used for doing the update. When you use code completion on ng model options, you can read all the documentation provided by Angular about this new feature. Update on, as you can see here, is documented. Debounce and the other options available on ng model options can be read about and you can learn directly inside the development environment in which you're using the code. Of course, you can also run into the Chrome browser, whether on the desktop or on a mobile device. You can then also use Cordova to create a native application. You can do testing, you can use code coverage. All kinds of features are directly available to you. You can connect NetBeans to the Chrome browser and click on items in the browser and see them back in the IDE. You can make changes in the IDE and immediately see them updated back in the browser. So switching from update on to, um, to debounce and back as we are doing right now is easily done and it's a question of refreshing the browser which is done automatically for you and immediately you'll see the functionality working. 
That's it. The first of several features we'll be looking at that are new in Angular 1.3. NG model options.